Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today for a discussion of dispensing process inspection and specifically a new platform from Co Young Technology. I am Eric Miskell with EMS Now and I'll be facilitating the discussion today. Before I introduce our speaker and dive into the content, let me first cover a couple of housekeeping issues, standard issues for webinars. Number one is all of you watching today are on mute and will remain that way throughout the webinar so that we don't have any interference from background noise. Uh, however, we do encourage you uh, to ask questions and I ask that you submit them using the box at the bottom of the screen. Uh, you can ask those at any time throughout. I will be monitoring them. And uh, if they're relevant to the section we just covered, I will pose them. If not, I'll hold them till the end of the session. And lastly, this webinar is being recorded and it will be rebroadcast next week on EMS Now. Um, so I encourage you to uh, watch it again and share it with all your colleagues. So that said, let's get into the, uh, the meat of what we're, we're discussing here today. As you see on your screen, the webinar is entitled, Take a Deep Dive into Your Dispensing Process with Neptune. And our presenter today, as you see in the small screen over there under me, is uh, uh, Harry Cuevas. He's the Applications Engineering Project Manager with Co Young Technology, obviously with the Co Young America piece of the larger corporation. So Harry, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Been looking forward to this session. Um, if you can kind of click the next slide forward, we're actually going off of Harry's uh, screen today. You'll see the agenda for our session today. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and it has to do with, you know, why the whole DPI that we're discussing. We'll discuss the Neptune series the lift technology, system capabilities, and, NEPT, and the advantages uh, offered by the system. So Harry, I'm gonna just kind of throw it over to you with kind of tell us, you know, why is this needed in the industry? Tell us about DPI. Hello everyone, good morning. First of all, thank you for joining to this webinar. So uh, going straight forward to the uh, webinar, Eric, it's uh, something related to the new devices, electronic devices, we are seeing every day as a part of our daily life. So that means uh, we have more electronic devices that goes to the exterior. Some of them, as you know, or cars, by example, every time uh, they are more technology uh, advantage with more gadgets, with more electronic stuff, so, which is related to the new age of electronic. So to have a better, let's say, protection of these devices against the moisture, the dust, vibration, temperature, everything that kind of uh, other variables that can affect the functioning of these electronic devices. So every time it's demanding more uh, dispensing process material for trying to uh, keep safe and working these electronic devices. That is why our technology, like a Ko Young is doing, it's introducing this inspection uh, for the dispensing uh, materials. So that is why we are trying to uh, cover these needs of uh, the industry to have a better solution of how this dispensing process is in quality. And uh, it's getting you know, new, new techniques of application. So that is why we are trying to, to introduce this new technology. Excellent. Why don't you begin by just telling us about it and what it is that um, Ko Young is doing? Right. So, why Ko Young uh, DPI? Uh, we are introducing this new machine with, with uh, the name of Neptune. So, Neptune has a new technology, which is a main advantage of our traditional uh, inspection system for the conformal coating, like. Uh, non-destructive to the inspection. So this is a new technology that machine has. We call it a LEAF technology, which is patented. So this technology will give us the advantage of measuring the 3D for those transparent and translucent materials, uh, you know, complemented with the 2D inspection traditional. So we will have a better uh, detection of this uh, conformal coating application. 
So uh, we can also uh, implement the AI power capabilities. That means it's not only related to uh, traditional AI as we know in the inspection systems, because we have like an uh, engine which is learning every time with the difference uh, in, the, in the field about the process, materials, boards, devices. So it's uh, something that never stops, you know? Every time this uh, kind of technology starts getting better, so we need to move in the same speed and that uh, is the biggest capability for our system in terms of a AI uh, capabilities. Also, we are introducing the simple and new interface for programming, which is uh, less touch of the mouse, less touch of the keyboard, uh, less time, which is main uh, resources in the companies. So all this combination of things, it's why we um, suggest, of course, our introduce our system as a main uh, advantage over other and traditional inspection for for uh, conformal coding, right? And so go, going further and beyond about this uh, is small brief, uh, you know, explanation, so we can add the inspection coverage. As you know, we have several kind of uh, dispensing process with transparent and translucent materials, like I said before, but also we have another ones like uh, underfill, we have potting materials, the the main difference with these uh, materials is is not are translucent or transparent their color so that's why we uh, combine the both uh, technologies with 2d and 3d to cover all the aspects in the industry so that is why uh, the the Kalyan dpi machine so going uh, in in more details with the coverage well the main advantage, uh, it's the coding thickness measurement, right, in 3D. So we're able to measure the thickness for different uh, levels in the surface of the PCB, including some components. Let's say we are going to inspect the conformal coding over the PCB, a specific spot area, or over an IC. IC leads, the body of the IC, or any other SMT device. So that's the main uh, advantage of this uh, technology. Also, we are covering the traditional 2D uh, defects like uh, bubbles and a splash, and simple presence of the coding area, right? Mm -hmm. Or combining with the underfill, and at the end, something that it's uh, Re remarkable, which is crack inspection. This is specific algorithm is still in, in development. It's almost ready, but it's something important to mention that will be something like a milestone for this kind of a top technology in terms of inspection. So continue with the inspection coverage. These are some images uh, like samples of how these defects are you know, detected by our machine. Uh, starting with the coding area, which is uh, 2D traditional inspection, combining the UV light with the uh, RGB lights. So we are going to have uh, better algorithms for detection of this coding area. Also with this same technology, we are going to be able to detect the bubbles and the uh, splashes in non-coded area. This is a big, uh, let's say challenge, Eric, because some of the focus of the inspections are related to de detect where the conformal is uh, applied. But mm -hmm. what happens if we have conformal in, in non-coded uh, area, like uh, let's say test points, we are going to have failures in the field, even in the process, right? So this is important to mention. So going to the 3D capability, let's uh, focus on this, uh, image in the upper right area, mm -hmm. uh, we are showing like uh, the coding thickness over the leads. So the machine, as we are going to see it uh, in, in, in the future, it's uh, we can use Gerber files, GAP files, or we can use it's, it's uh, whatever the information we have available at this moment for the job generation. But 
using the PCB information, we will have uh, a statistical measurement of the thickness for every lead and reference, which is a good good thing to, to have mm -hmm. for analysis of the process. So for underfill, we will have all something similar because we can have the reference for the underfill area for a specific component, right? So this is uh, complementing the GSMART solution that we are offering in other platforms like AI or SPI. So we are able to have a relation with the SPC data from one process to another, always matched by the reference, not, not only per specific area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, with this kind of uh, technology, which is uh, the 3D, so we can have something we call non-destructive cross-section. So at the end with this technology, uh, which is the leaf technology, we're able to uh, have this profile of the conformal thickness, even in the leads. It can be over the leads and it can be after the tip of the lead. So it's covering two different heights and that will give us a better scenario of how the process is in, in, in our board, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So more samples like uh, non-destructive to the inspection. Traditional cross-section is destructive, as you know, this board is going to be a scrap. It takes uh, at least 48 hours and uh, we need several sample tests. That, that means wasting money, right? Money at the end. So with the Covian solution, we don't damage the board. We're going to have a very reliable profile of the coding application over the leads. This is like a, a sample only. It can be over the PCB. It can be over the body of any other SMT device, but uh, it can be done in less of three minutes, right? So at the end, we are going to preserve the PCB and it's more money we are saving. And something important to remark as previously mentioned is to have SPC data available which is something important to measure how we saw process uh, performance. Okay, so now going to uh, the next uh, line in the agenda, it's talking about the Neptune series. So at this moment we have the, let's say benchtop uh, model, which is Neptune T. This is more focused to lab analysis because at the end it's not necessary to have it in line and we can place almost any kind of uh, product, board, uh, housing, or as we need it without the, the necessity of having a fixture to put the, the assembly over. So this is very flexible for almost all kinds of companies, but it's not recommended if you are thinking to have it in line for production, you know, in, in the line. Mm -hmm. So the next series is, uh, or the next model model is the Neptune C Plus uh, that will uh, have the capability to be in line in the SMT line and uh, will give you the same capabilities of the Neptune T, but with the plus of having it in regular production environment and uh, in automatic way. This is something very important. Mm -hmm. So something to remark here is the uh, imaging depth, which is more accurate than traditional uh, other systems in the market, because we are able to go from 10 microns up to 3.5 millimeters, combining the best of the RGB light and the UV light. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this same module, we will have uh, the 3D uh, leaf uh, module that will give us that extra capacity over traditional systems for measuring 3D uh, thickness. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something maybe too much people be familiar with, uh, having a system that can be uh, set up in the line from transferring water from the left to the right, right to the left. Also is capable to have a flipper integrated in the conveyor of the machine. Uh, that will give us the chance to inspect both sides of the board in the same in the same process, right? 
Hey, um, before you move yeah. on, there, somebody just posed a question that seems relevant to this, which um, I don't know if you saw that or not, but it is uh, the question is what technology is used to measure thickness? That's good. Uh, exactly. This is the next topic in the agenda, which is called uh, lead the technology, right? <laughs> so in, in general way, this is a laser technology. That means that if we go uh, to this uh, drawing here, we will see like a light source, which is uh, on the left. This, this light will be projected to the uh, galvanometer which is like a, you know, spinning, mm -hmm. will be showing, well, projecting the laser beam in different angles in X and Y direction. So at the end, these three different uh, laser beams are going to be superimposed to uh, give us a tomography of the, of the material. So, it's simple because this is a laser which is uh, projected to the surface in different angles. And at the end, this, this photo sensor will be uh, capturing this information uh, reflected from the surface. This is the lift technology. It's something like uh, Kojong patented uh, with uh, the best of the laser combined with the RGB traditional light. Mm -hmm. So, at the end, this technology will give us a uh, better resolution and imaging depth uh, from five microns to 20 microns. Uh, there is no other product in the market with this resolution. This is the, the way the machine measures the 3D thickness. Good. And uh, in this next, next slide, uh, we have uh, uh, you know animation of how this, this works. And uh, at the end, it's like a uh, scanning over the surface. And when this laser beam found something to reflect the light, which is usually metal, can be uh, something plastic, can be another type of material. Uh, and also depends too much about the refractive index of the conformal. Every material has a different conformal. So, Something that we are going to mention uh, later on, it's about to how the machine can find in outer way this refractive index, saving a lot of time for programming, you know? So at the end, this technology will give us this kind of image like uh, tomography, like uh, Koyon is uh, explaining in the, in the marketing material, because we have the capability to uh, do this kind of cross section like a tomography at the end. So, in general way, it's how the machine uh, is capable to find the thickness in different materials with different reflective index, and also with the um, easy easy of, of use uh, technology, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, before you move on with that though, Harry, let me just ask too. How does the lift technology help with conformal coating inspection then, specifically? Well, specifically because we have uh, like, um, let's say this light intensity, which is uh, the laser beam we have here, uh, goes deep through the material, right? So once this light, it's going deeper, so we will have a reduction or decreasing of the, of the depth. So having this kind of a technology, this laser can go deeper and get, let's say, more information, even if the material is different in every in every board, right? Yeah. So that is the main advantage of this of this light technology. Okay. Thank you. Here, let, uh, okay. I interrupted you there. Let's uh, get into the, the details of this as you were moving forward. About this drawing? You mean? No, the next slides you were. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. good. So the next uh, topic in the agenda is about the system capabilities. Uh, trying to summarize, you know, uh, as we have been talking about, the main differentiator of our leaf technology for measuring thickness. So it comes together with a simple flow chart to create a job file from the scratch. 
in less than five minutes, let's say. Because as we are trying to, to show here, so we have uh, an easy to use GUI, what uh, is asking to have a parsing, which is dimension, if it's a panel array, single board. So after that, the machine uh, have the tools to teach every mark, let's say barcodes, fiducials, other kind of uh, marks we are interested to check prior to inspection of the conformal, of course. And then something that will be, uh, let's say, be saving time for uh, recipe creation, which is UV light setting. In this, in this step, Eric, the machine will be uh, in our way learning the best match of value for UV light to perform the inspection. So if we have a sample board, the machine will be capable to find the best uh, illumination value to perform inspection. And then based on that information captured with the UV light setting, we will be able to set in easy way, uh, the region with uh, coding, the regions with non coding uh, as explained uh, uh, some minutes ago, and some ignore areas, uh, by example, the, the corner. There are some holes that we don't need to inspect. We don't need to generate an FOB to, to inspect. And this tool in other way can find it and ignore it. Also, we have some a standard library for IC component that will give us the chance to have a database to uh, relate every single part number to a specific package and then for the future job file, this information is already stored in the database. It just will be pulled out to this new recipe and that's it. Only fine tuning maybe with more samples and that's it. So also the 3D thickness is so, so easy because if we have the IC component information, let's say how many uh, leads are in the IC, the thickness of the leads, all that kind of information make us easiest uh, to program the 3D thickness. So for the underfill, it's, it's just an easy to draw the ROI of the interested area and the algorithm will find uh, the angle and the distance from the body of the component uh, until the underfill when, when it touches the, the PCB. So at the end, combining these, these tools, we will have a production uh, job job file that it's, uh, let's say, easy to understand for every single uh, operator inspector in the line to, to understand what the machine is finding during inspection. So at the end, we will have this friendly review station that will give us a 2D image or picture of the whole board we will have a specific zoom or you know, uh, interested area of the inspection showing us what the machine find or, or found during inspection, like a bubbles, uh, you know, uh, thickness, uh, whatever the, the job file is uh, looking for. And at the end, we will be able to classify each defect and uh, this information will be located in the database to be consulted after in the SPC software. So following these simple steps, uh, it's how the machine uh, will give us the capability to have uh, an inspection uh, program in less than five minutes. So continue with this uh, system capabilities, uh, as we mentioned also before, it's about to inspect the through the thickness in the material transparent, translucent, and also combining the two inspection, some pigmented materials. So we have different type of materials, right? We can cover coating, underfill, potting, glues, uh, bondings. So as we know, these also have uh, different compounds that can be acrylic, silicone, uh, well, as, as you know, no? So mm -hmm. at the end, Every, every time there are going to be new, new compounds. And at the end, these kind of uh, settings of the RGB, uh, laser, infrared, UV light will be covering this, this aspect. So 
going more in detail how the machine it's just to to try to explain to the people how easy is the machine to to operate and do the programming we have these simple uh let's say algorithms that will cover almost all the aspects we are been talking about so the the first one is the coding which is trying to find a specific area with conformal it can be per area per percentage it can be for an roi in circle in rectangle polygonal if is necessary so we have another algorithm which is non-coding same specific rois circle a rectangle polygonal and uh, 3d thickness 3d thickness can be let's say the the most uh let's say helpful tool uh for this uh technology which is lead so the 3d thickness as i mentioned before also it's uh, uh applying the automatic tools like finding the refractive index for each conformal type and also it can be you know uh, measuring conformal over an smt uh, device or at the pcb le level so you know combining these three algorithms we will be able to have maybe 80 percent of the of the coverage for one single job file and uh, uh, other detections like uh, bubbles are in the same tool like in the coding algorithm so in this way eric that what i'm trying to to say is the machine is not too complex you know we have single and, and simple algorithms covering the whole type of uh, defects we want to to find during dpi okay yeah so hey harry let me ask yeah. a question there and you you say that it, it the machine is not that complicated but the function that it performs is obviously very complicated um so how <laughs> yeah. can the machine how can the machine measure thickness accurately if the refractive index in every compound is different right well i don't have a picture here to show the the bottom but at the end eric the the principle is to have uh the machine will be uh you know uh projecting this laser beam over the surface of course mm -hmm. we need to to tell the machine what what the spot on in, in the pcb we need to find the refractive index of the conformal mm -hmm. But this, this uh, tool will be scanning this area with laser beam in different directions. We'll be finding the best base where the laser is reflected and then goes to the camera. So once the algorithm finds in another way how this laser beam is you know, pointing to the camera is when the machine will, will be uh, finding the best refractive index, right? So it's something we cannot see by the eye, but the machine is working in the background. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, okay, continue with the system capabilities. This is a sample of how we can draw uh, poly polygonal ROI for inspecting the, the conformal. Also, he has uh, it has some uh, uh, red red uh, areas uh, indicating the machine has found some uh, bubbles or, or splash, some kind of detect. So it's the way the machine is telling you uh, one side that there is some, some issues, okay? So if you want to check the details of, of the issues found is here in the right with the red dot indicating that is uh, uh, some detail. If we, if we click over this uh, specific finding, so the machine will be zooming to the specific spot where the defect is found. Uh, this, uh, let's say, sample is finding five different uh, type of defects in the same in the same spot area. So mm -hmm. here, Eric, also something important to mention is, so machine can easily detect, uh, let's say, just for mentioning something, a bubble uh, of two microns of area, so with no false codes. So that that is uh, telling us how accurate is this machine. Okay. And then as uh, so we are collecting or gathering information of the 
microns, millimeters, percentage, in thickness or area, all this information is going to be stored in a database. At the end, it can be consulted in, in a chart like we are showing here, right? Because we, we have an indicator that the length is like uh, 1000 microns for this specific splash. And also it's telling me the size in microns, right? So that's the, you know, uh, main differentiator of this machine. Mm -hmm. Also, we have another challenging inspection uh, that we, we have in, in, in a customer side, uh, which is finding some splashes into the connector, you know, into the house of the connector. Also, they are interested in how the machine can be uh, capable to find these splashes over the body of the connector. So in both ways, machine uh, was capable to find these spots uh, as you can see here, it's a color uh, plotting. So even though there is, there is no challenge for the machine finding these kind of uh, splashes into the, the housing of the connector. So continue with the system capabilities uh, as we have been talking about, big, big uh, dif differentiator of this machine is the 3D thickness measurement capability. So something we want to remark here or highlight is about how the machine is finding the base. As we here, sorry, as we have here in the right, this image like uh, seems to be like an X-ray image, but it's not, it's tomography. Uh, it's telling, telling us how the laser, this refractive index, as we spoke uh, some minutes ago, it's finding the base that could be something metal like this in, in this sample, which is copper. And then based on that, it finds uh, the other shiny part, which is the conformal coating. In, in that particular uh, case, machine uh, will be measuring in different spots as you need it. It's not only one spot, we can add several spots and uh, the machine will easily find this uh, base and then the coating. So this is the way the machine will reconstruct this 3D uh, cross section to make sure we are uh, measuring the, the spot we need and we have the right height we are looking for. So as you know, uh, if the conformal coating is too thick, will cause some issues in the, in the future with vibration, maybe temperature or whatever the, the situation is. But what, what happens if, if it's the opposite? What, what happens if it's too thin? So having a thickness too thin is the challenging for other technologies because it's not easy to find that shiny, shiny of the conformal over the, over the part. But using big technology, as we can see here in the cross section, it's so easy to find this. By example, this has like a 130 something microns of thickness that the machine is easily finding and reconstructing the 3D image for a better understanding of what the machine is, is finding. So in this specific algorithm, a uh, machine is capable to, uh, to define the, the inspection by the average of the conformal coding or setting the upper or the lower limit for uh, specific areas. This is more related uh, or common to see it in uh, PCBs for medical, uh, medical devices. And this is something critical. So that's why we have this flexibility to choose if we are going to check by average or upper or lower, lower limit. So going with the, continue with the thickness, this is one uh, sample of how the machine can inspect the coating over the leads of one IC. By example, in this uh, specific point, which is uh, the shoulder of the, of the lead, this is challenging because the, the brightness of the lead, which is metal, can be too similar to the conformal coating, but using the base, or a refractive index that the machine can learn in outer way, easily, it's easily to, uh, to find the difference between them, even if it's like uh, 10 microns of difference between them. So 
this is only a one sample that we want to show of how the machine is capable, no matter if it's metal or shiny, uh, the laser will find this, this uh, thickness over, over the lead. And uh, okay, this is at the end, the uh, interface that the programmer and the operator will see in the real life. So that means we don't need to check with a microscope on another uh, device to make sure we are, you know, seeing or finding in, in, in the good way, the thickness over the leads. So as we have the reference, which is the IC, let's say U1. So this is the lead number one, the lead number 20 something. We will have measurement for each lead related and uh, the profile of the cross section for each lead. And here we will have this trend chart uh, showing us how the process is in the whole IC. Good. So, well, important to mention because this is something the operator and the programmer will be able to see for, you know, programming or choosing if it's a defect or not. Hey, Harry, quick question. When you, what you just shared yeah, sure. before about the, um, so my understanding is that the Neptune can measure both dry or wet material, right? Can, can, can right. measure that. And then it is, right. from the picture on the slide before, it showed where there was too thick, so there was no curing going on down below there. There it is, too thick, no internal curing. So the system is able to detect that problem existing there. Correct, correct, Eric. So uh, let me try to uh, explain. Uh, in another uh, specific situation. Let's think about having uh, a process where we want to make sure we are dispensing the material in the right way prior to have the curing process or drying process, right? So we can have uh, one machine uh, prior to the curing process or drying process to make sure the dispensing, you know, the, the material is right, the thickness, uh, maybe the viscosity is in the in the proper uh, way we need to do. It. But after that, I want to make sure also that during the curing or drying process, the material is not, you know, going to other places that we don't want to have it. So combining two machines, one before, another prior, uh, sorry, after, so we will be covering the the two the two coverages. So how we can. Uh, well, how the machine can do this possible, it's uh, basically using the refractive index teaching tool. So as we know, the viscosity, the, the shiny, everything is going to be different prior to the curing process. So using this teaching tool, the machine will, will know that is before the curing process or after the curing process. So all we need to do is to click this tool, learn the value and go on continue with the, with the inspection. Very good, thank you. Welcome. So, okay, continue with the system capabilities. Uh, the other, let's say, uh, popular in, in some way, we can say in that way. So uh, requirement so far is uh, underfill inspection. So every time uh, we are seeing more medical devices, where we need to protect these specific sensors or chips from contamination, uh, dust or, or whatever. And the underfill, it's treated like a different uh, process because most of the time this is black, right? It's not transparent or translucent. It's uh, something common. So combining these two technologies, let's say 2D and 3D, we're able to check uh, one, the distance from the body to the PCB, just to make sure we are covering enough area with underfill, but also we are not touching other devices, right? This is something critical. And uh, with the 3D thickness, we can check the height of the underfill and also the angle. So combining these two technologies, uh, that's how Ko Ko Young it's uh, you know, dedicating one specific algorithm for underfill inspection. It's treated like a different inspection with the same technology, right? Mm -hmm. 
And here we have a, a sample where we are showing the profile of this underfill. So the machine is detecting in this area in the right that is not uh, enough height in the distance between the body of the component to the other uh, components or PCB. So we can find eight different spots, four for the corner and the other four for the other sides. So in this way, we, we are covering that the underfill is not invading uh, other areas. We don't need the underfill. And also we are making sure maybe this not covering the, the, the top surface of the component. But also we are making sure we have enough height of the underfill to protect the leads inside or above the, the component, okay? So uh, at the end, uh, again, this is the interface and the tools that the operator and the engineer will be using and will be uh, having available for uh, programming and also de defining if it's or not a defect for the underfill application. So, okay. Continue with the capabilities of the machine. Uh, we are trying to remark this bubble inspection as we know is something very, uh, let's say normal to see during the coding process. And uh, the biggest challenge here, Eric, is about to have less false calls uh, per small bubbles. So what the machine is doing is in some way learning and feeding uh, AI engine with the different process materials, PCBs in the, in the customer side. And at the end, we will have like a, this uh, database with the patterns, uh, bubble size, shapes, everything, which is related to each specific company. So the machine has already an engine with the bubbles for detection which is the standard algorithm, but you can continue uh, feeding this database with uh, another shapes or bubbles, uh, you know, as, as you requested with your products because each product has differences between them. By example, in the image here at the right, there is a bubble between the two, the two components. For one customer, this bubble uh, is something acceptable. They say, okay, I don't care about this bubble. Th thank you for uh, having this capability, but for me, it's not a defect. But for other customers, this is a big, big issue. So they cannot have this kind of bubble between the, the ICs. So how the machine can help to improve the performance on inspection with the AI technology. So the machine can learn, if you say, this is good for me, okay, learn this uh, new shape pattern or dimension keep it in the database and for the next time we will, this will not be shown as a, as a false code, right? Or in the other hand, for me, it's very critical, learn this bubble like something we need to find every time. So this, uh, going, this information is going to the database for the next inspection, next models, and always find it as a, as a defect. So that is, that is how the AI engine works for bubble detection. And uh, well, this is all related in, in, in system capabilities as uh, tools we, we want to show like uh, big advantages of using the, the Co-Young uh, machine. So going to the next topic in the agenda, uh, we have these advantages over traditional uh, technologies uh, just as a, as, as mentioned in something, the Co-Young Leaf technology in general terms, it's faster, accurate, and uh, will give us at the end uh, results capable to be exported to some file, TXT or whatever you need, that at the end can, can be uh, used for the SPC purpose. As we, we have all the information on how the machine is measuring, we can have Pareto's, we can have charts, we can have histograms uh, as we need. It is, at the end, this is the, the main advantage of having this kind of technology. So 
as we have also explained a little bit before, so easy to use. What, what, what is the real meaning of is easy to use? Well, if I am a scientist, easy to use is, you know, have an interface with a lot of stuff. But for other people, it's just click one button. Mm -hmm. So I think for terms in the industry is to have the best performance inspection in the less time possible, right? With the less skills needed for doing it. So that's why we are summarizing easy process guide, which is I can have or not the PCB file, which is Gerber, CAD file or whatever, or I just can draw an ROI in different shapes in the areas where I need uh, to inspect. And at the end, it's easy to just check a box of what kind of inspection do I need, the tolerance, and that's it. Because the most challenging part, which is having the best illumination or the refractive index or finding the base for the thickness measurement, the machine is doing it by, by itself in other way. So that's why we refer like a easy to use uh, machine. And at the end, uh, all this information goes to a database. So we can have a SPC dashboard with the most important information like a defect type, the yield, uh, histograms, uh, to have the historic uh, information of a board. Maybe this board has been tested 10 times. So we need to know why, why the board is still there, right? So at the end, this, this SPC uh, software is able to uh, give us that kind of information. So uh, additional, we can have reports that can be sent or created in our way to, uh, you know, to monitor how the performance is in the dispensing process. It's something very easy also. Other main advantage of this machine, talking about like a tools, is having this internal flipper. Um, as you know, this is, a, let's say, backend process in some way because all the SMT is already populated, it's uh, processed, and uh, we don't want to spend uh, more time moving the board from, from one point to another to inspect the other side. So if your need is to have an inspection that it's capable to make it by both sides at the same time, it's much better. So that's why the machine has this flipping uh, process into the, into the machine, where in this video, it's more easy to, to understand. So there it's one, one side, the inspection goes, traditional like an LI, with fiducials go to the inspection, it ends, just go back a little bit, flip. Got it. Sorry about that, not sure what happened. Oh, no, not the video? No. Oh, okay. Keep going. No, 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 my bad, that's. Well, at the end, this, this video is just showing how how the conveyor is working inside the machine. Nothing, nothing special, just to, to have uh, an idea of how easy and how robust the, the hardware is. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, uh, you know, advantages of using Coyon DPI is because we have, or we can have integrated the whole inspection uh, in the SMT line. Since mm -hmm. the very beginning of the process, which is a solder printer inspection, we can have a pre-reflow AOI. We will have post-reflow AOI. We can combine uh, inspections with the API machine or THD machine, which is AOI, covering these different uh, processes in the line. And then together with the DPI, that can be before the curing process or after the curing process, we will have the whole information uh, in the same key smart suite since from the base management 
to the SPC uh, data this is something important Eric, because at the end if you already have a, a machine of Koyong, we can have this uh, uh, communication between machines to have a better uh, scenario of how the performance of the of the line is mm -hmm. so in in general way eric this is the presentation that you yep. want to, to show to the people and explain the advantages yeah absolutely and thank you for that and sorry there were some Seem to be some technical issues here in the last few minutes, but I I missed a little bit of that. But as far as the case smart, I know about case smart and the integration with SPI and AOI. Is the DPI integrated in case smart yet? Definitely, it is integrated uh, at this point of the you know development and um, of the product. It's related to the library manager that will give you the control of having. Uh, management of the, each job file and uh, the library, the package library. And uh, also we have the SPC integrated and uh, in the near future, it will be integrated to the RMS, RPM, which is remote uh, controlling monitoring system. But yes, definitely it is integrated in the key okay. solution. Excellent, excellent. Um, I know we have a few minutes left. If there's any last questions anybody wishes to uh, to pose to Harry, please do so now. Um, as I'm waiting to see if there are any, let me just remind everyone that this session is being recorded uh, with all its flaws there at the end. And uh, let me uh, advise that it will be rebroadcast on EMS Now next week. So again, I encourage everyone to, uh, to listen again and to share it with colleagues. Um, let me just see. I am seeing no additional questions. Let me check the chat. Uh, oh, here's a question. Does the splash inspection 2D have any impact on cycle time? Definitely no. No, because uh, the same principle that AOI is, if the algorithm or inspection is within the same FOB, would not increase the inspection okay, time. Good. Someone's asking if we're sharing this as a PowerPoint. We are not because we don't have this, and this is a, a video piece, and there's some animation embedded in it. So I would encourage you to uh, to check on EMS now next week. You can just simply get a link to this again. So, um, okay. If there are no additional questions, let me. Let me wrap this by saying, Harry, thank you very much for this. This is actually, I was looking forward to it and it proved to be uh, quite interesting. Um, up here we get some more. Um, sorry, what's the wavelength for the UV? <laughs> so the questions are coming in. Does the DPI use EPM software and what is the wavelength through the UV? Well, that's a good, very good question. So no, this new interface, it's, let's say the new thing uh, that will be applied also for the future to the LI and SPI. So EPM is not required. It's in the same uh, GUI. It's like uh, the whole flow process for job generation is there. We don't need the EP EPM for this, for this okay. issue. And uh, well, the wavelength for the UV, honestly, I don't have the answer. Let me check and I can give you back the yeah. answer, yeah. What I will do, uh, as always, is to encourage people who wish to know more, even to, to arrange for a demo of the uh, of the Neptune C+, to reach out directly to either Harry, you can find him on LinkedIn if you're not already connected, or also to your local uh, Co Young uh, representatives. They'd be more than happy to provide more information and to uh, arrange for a demonstration uh, for you specifically. Um, so, Harry, um, Thank you for this. Appreciate this. this is a very informative. Well, Look forward to seeing how this evolves and how it's taking up in the industry. So, uh, again, thank time you. today. This was excellent. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. Um, have a good day. Bye bye. Good day.